And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to Page along with you here for game number two as we are ready to go. A couple drizzles starting here at Pioneer Park, but looking at the forecast and the, the radar, it doesn't look like anything too bad. Should be moving through, just some light sprinkles. But we're ready to go here in game number two as Nick Flesher will get the start for Tusculum, the left-hander, the senior 2-0 on the season, a 5.93 ERA as he will look to try to see if he can Help the Pioneers to pick up their second victory here this afternoon. And he'll start out by delivering a first pitch strike. So 4.50, the time of our first pitch here in game number two. As leading things off, it'll be Dominic Ford. We saw him start in game one. As he watched this one miss outside before he was taken out of the game for a pinch hitter. He had two at-bats. In game one, he was 0 for 2 with a pop-up and a ground out. Looking to see if he can start things off here for Queens in game number two. Is this one miss up in the zone? Numbers for Flesher. Obviously, the 2-0 record, the 5.93 ERA. This will be his fourth start of the season. 13 and two-thirds innings pitch, 17 hits, 16 runs. Nine of those earned. Swing and a miss here. Six walks. 13 strikeouts, batters hitting 288 against him. And the 2 2, we're going to miss outside. So the count goes full here to the first batter of our game. And Dominic Ford trying to become a leadoff base runner with Alex Sexton in the on deck circle. Again, Tusculum took game one 7 to 3. And that one has swung on, and that will be foul out of play, first base side. Pioneers had a 7 to nothing lead going in to the top of the seventh inning of game one before Queens did rally. They picked up five hits in the inning, scored three runs, and took the starter, Gunnar Becker, out of the game as he wasn't able to get his third complete game of the season. And this pitch is going to miss low and inside, so it will be a leadoff walk to start out the game here for Dominic Ford. So that'll bring up Alex Sexton, the first baseman. He, too, also started game one in left field. And he did pick up one of those hits in that seventh inning as he had a one for four showing in game one. A couple of ground outs, a strikeout, a single. Chops this one. Flip to second. The turn is not going to be in time. But Tusculum will take a lead out there at second. As Florida is going to be the first out. On the six to four. The D, number 33, Carter Foster. So that'll bring up Carter Foster, the designated hitter in the number three spot. And he was actually the final out in that seventh inning. As he ground out and assisted to first base. Did have a hit in the sixth inning, also walked, popped up in game number one. And he swings and misses here to pitch. Biting down and in the left-hander. Flusher here in game number two. So he has a good view there of the runner. Sexton at first. We did not see any stolen base opportunities from Queens in game one. Sexton one for three in stolen bases this year. This one's going to get away from one level. The runner goes down to second. The throw, but it won't be... Anywhere close to trying to apply a tag or anything like that. So for the runner, we'll move down to second. Good base running there from Sexton. So Queens does get a runner in scoring position here with one out. As Foster steps back in. One and one the count to him. One away here in the top of the first inning, game two. Flusher delivers. And that'll be taken for a called strike. Foster thought about starting to offer at it. Couldn't pull the trigger. And Tusculum coming into this game now 12 and 2 overall in the season, 8 and 1 in the South Atlantic Conference for Queens, 5 and 13, 3 and 10 in conference play. Here's the 1 2 offering, and that one misses over into the left handed batter's box. Even the count of two balls and two strikes. 
And it was a walk to Ford to start things out, and then that fielder's choice is Huskelman tried to turn to, but couldn't get the out at first, so Sexton reached on that fielder's choice, and then he moved over on um, the baseball that got away from Wollenweber. And now uh, this one, I think they're going to say hit the batter. And they say it will, so the runner Sexton was often going for third, but he'll have to go back to second. As they say that that did hit the batter, Foster. That's the second batter that Flesher has hit this season. So that'll put runners on first and second with one away. As that will bring up the right fielder, Riley Cheek. Cheek had a double in that seventh inning, also scored a run. He was one for three with a, also a ground out and a strikeout in game one. Flasher delivers, and that one given a ride. And that'll be fouled out of play, first base side. It's over top of the stands. Ford Creek, the sophomore, uh, Shelby, North Carolina, one of several players on this team has transferred from UNC Charlotte. Not really having to go all that far from the campus of USC Charlotte to Queens as a strike is delivered here. As the count is 0 and 2 as both of those campuses located right in Charlotte, North Carolina. Count 0 and 2, one away here, top of the first inning. Nick Flesher trying to work around a hit batter. A walk in this inning. Here's the pitch. That one will miss over in the left handed batter's box. Well, sure does have some room to work, obviously, being ahead in the count, but I get those pitches a little bit closer and try to see if you can get a chase outside of the zone. Missing that fall over in the batter's box, not going to draw a swing. Runners lean here from first and second to pitch. That one swung on. Could be a tough play. Flusher's got to make the long throw. He does. We had to go over the body. So he does get the out, but both runners move up. As that was a high chopper off the plate. He initially looked quickly at third. But he realized that there was no option there. And so it's second and third. The two outs and Pickard stepping in. He finally got going in that seventh inning rally in game one for Queens. As he had the RBI single, his only hit of the game. That's a fastball here for a called strike. So the runner Sexton is at third, Foster is at second. Bowling Weber goes to the signs. Try to frame that one, but that one will miss outside. Count evens up. Did have some other scores to pass along across Tusculum Athletics here on the Saturday. As we said earlier, Tusculum men's lacrosse dropping a 21 to 11 decision against number seven, Lenore Ryan on the road. As this one's fouled back, also in beach volleyball action. Tusculum in their first of two matches of the day, picked up a 4-1 win against Erskine to move to three and zero on the season. They should currently be underway against Carson Newman, as that was a tri match between those three schools this afternoon. They're in Jefferson City. Count one and two here, two away. Where is it? Second and third. Nick Flesher trying to work out of the inning. Here's the pitch, and that one swung out and missed strike three. Flesher does get out of it as he strands a pair of runners in scoring position. As his teammates come out to greet him here from the dugout, we go to the bottom of the first here in game two, no score. As you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls. 
all the ingredients. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here. As we get ready for bottom of the first inning, game number two. As Tuscan will come to the plate for the first time here. After Queens got a pair of runners in scoring position, but couldn't push across a run there. Starting pitcher here in game two for Queens will be number 31, the right-hander, Tanner Jacobson. And for Jacobson, a freshman out of Pittsburgh, PA. On the season, a 1-2 and two record, a 9.42 ERA, 15 walks, 14 strikeouts. As Tuscan will try to see if they can, as they've done in most of their games this year, get a quick start offensively. In game one, it was three runs in the bottom of the first, three runs in the bottom of the second, and that was pretty much all of the offense that they needed. And they've done that a lot this year. They've scored early and often in games. So we'll see if they can do that here in game number two is Zane Keener will step in. Keener, Ford, and Martin, the top three batters in the lineup for Tuscan here in game two. And as Keener swings at the first pitch, fouls that one out of play down the left field line. He waits the 0-1 offering here from Jacobson. That one skipped in front of the catcher. Anthony Order, a catcher here in game number two for the Royals. We did not see him in game one. As it was Bailey. That one in there for a called strike two. And then that will put on the shift. Jacobson delivers the offering, and that one is not offered out by the batter, Keener. So the count will be two and two. And that one will miss outside. The only different defensive changes for Queens here in game two is in left field, Noah Jones, who was a pinch hitter in game one. He gets the start in left field here. And this one, Sexton, who we saw in left field in game one, is at first base here. This one given a ride out to left center, but that one will be tracked down by the center fielder. On the run is Dominic Ford able to bring it in. And then obviously Anthony Orta getting the start behind the plate here in game two for Queens. So that'll bring up Bryson Ford, the shortstop for Tuscalum. Reached base twice and scored a pair of runs in game one. Did not come away with a hit, takes a strike here. The 0 1 is swung on. That one hit out to right center, and that one will be called for by the center fielder. So Dominic Ford has the first two defensive outs here in the bottom of the first inning. And that'll bring up Dalton Martin. As Martin in game one had a two run home run, also a single. Went two for four with two RBIs. Sees what he can do here with two outs in the bottom of the first inning. Takes a fastball here just inside. And that one will miss as well. So count two and oh. Another take by Dalton Martin hasn't moved the batter, hasn't moved the bat off his shoulder here. And the count 3 0 as he tries to become a two out base runner. Trying to see if he can get Trammell up to the plate. Jacobson delivers the 3 0, and that'll be in there. Catches the other half for a called strike. Getting back to back fly balls to center field to start off the bottom of the first. Here's the 3 1. And that one Martin decided to offer at, and that one. Got fouled right back towards the on deck circle and Trammell. So now a chance here for Jacobson maybe to get out of it after he fell behind the count 3-0. and It's now 3-2, and two, 2 away. He'll get the signs from his catcher, Orta. 
the offering. That's high, ball four. So it is a two out walk issued to Dalton Martin. So he will keep the inning alive for Dalton Martin. That'll be his 11th walk of the season. That'll bring up Brandon Trammell, the right fielder. Now batting 375 on the year, 21 hits, 56 at bats, seven home runs. And 30 runs batted in. He falls behind the count here, 0 and 1. That one drops in. Nice pitch there from Tanner Jacobson. So the count quickly 0 and 2. Two away here. Runner is at first. Both teams have had a runner, at least one runner in the first inning. And thinking about that was Trammell, but he held off. We did see him chase at a pitch in game number one as he struck out. Went outside of the zone. To try to make contact with the pitch. Rays here in the left-handed batter's box. Count one and two. Pitcher Jacobson will check the runner. He goes. The pitch is swung on and missed, so they won't need to throw. As the fastball from Tanner Jacobson gets Trammell, and that will end the inning. So score this first inning for both sides here in game number two as you're watching Tuscal and Baseball here in the Pioneer Sports Network. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Ah, uh, French vanilla, rocky road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop shakalaka, 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 scoop shakalaka, 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 Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. And we're ready to go here in the top of the second inning. Double hunter action between Queens and Tusculum. Both teams scoreless in the first inning. Nick Flesher back out there for the Pioneers. Did a lot of a pair of base runners in the top of the first inning. And he was able to strand both of those runners at second and third. As the first pitch is swung in by Jones, and that's going to be a leadoff single for Noah Jones. We saw come into pinch hit late in game one, finished one for two with a single, and the ground out has a single here. First pitch swinging. So that's the first hit of the ball game. Second baseman, Drake Harris. And that will bring up Drake Harris, the second baseman. He moves from the number four spot to the number seven spot in the lineup between game one and game two. Working against the left-hander, Flesher. Starts by showing bunt, pulls it back, that misses low. Harris was the only Queens batter against the starter, Gunnar Becker, in game one to reach base more than once as he had a single and a walk against Gunnar Becker. Head in the count here, 1-0. And, and that one's in there for a called strike. 
As Harrison started again by showing bunt, pulled back. That was when he probably should have kept the bat down, tried to put in play. And he'll look back to the dugout here to get signs from his first year head coach, Ross Steedley. Runner leads at first. And the floor over. As Jones back safely. Wallen well, Weber, the catcher, will go through the signs here for Tusculum. Now the pitch, popping that one up. And Weber, Wallen well, Weber will catch it. So a bad at bat there for Harris as he pops up the bunt attempt. And Wallen well, Weber right there to catch it out of the stance for the first down. So that will bring up the catcher, Orta. Again, seeing him in the first game. We did not see him in game one. As he is a sophomore from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Comes into the right-handed batter's box against Flesher, and that one will miss over. And the left-handed batter's box, the count 1-0. and Shortstop Melton in the on-deck circle. Again, batting in the number nine spot. Consecutive games. Lusher delivers. That one looked to be good, but no call from home plate umpire. Umpire switching up here for game two. Now David Lindsay behind the plate. Tim Guerin in the field. As Lusher tries to work back here in the count. throw over as the runner back easily in Jones it was a single to start the inning then the bunt that was popped up and this one will miss up and away so the count three now Flusher in danger of walking his first batter of the game Again, the strikeout to walk ratio, 13 strikeouts, six walks. Coming in this one, he has one walk already. A 3-0 is in there for a called strike. Flusher trying to see if he can pick up the second out, maybe keep this one from going back to the top of the order in the inning for Queens. Here's the 3-1, and that's going to be a call strike two. They go in the part of the strike zone. And now a full count here to the catcher, Orta. Orta awaits the offering. Usher sets and delivers. That one is swung on. Short stop, flips the second. Martin, the turn, the scoop not able to be handled over there at first so just the lead runner is going to be out on the play the fielder's choice as it was jones who will be down six to four shortstop nick melton so that will bring up the number nine batter and melton the shortstop there's first at bat He tried to lay down a bunt, but followed it back. And he'll come back. He's trying to go with some small ball here. And the runner first and two outs and showing bunt. And the number nine batter. So the left hander flush will sit on the mound. Good lead over at first. For Orta, the catcher, there's a fastball in there for a called strike. Orta, this is his fourth start of the season. He's appeared in six games. He is one for one in his stolen base opportunities. And 
Here's the 0-2, and that one is swung on, and that one is going to be into right field. That will allow Orta go to third, as that was off the end of the bat and just lost momentum. So it was not able to be got to there by Martin or Ezra. And so that'll turn out to be the second hit of the game for Queens, and it puts runners here at first and third. And it sends it back to the top of the order here for Dominic Ford. The center fielder, number six, Dominic Ford. Also a nice base run again from Orta, the catcher. He went first to third on the play, on the ball that just barely got out of the infield. Flash going to have to work again out a little bit of trouble here in the second inning. Fastball in there for a strike, and that was after he was ahead in the count 0-2 to the number nine batter, Melton. will lead here from the corners. Two away in the top of the second inning. Here's the pitch, and that one is swung on and missed right into the glove of Warren Lover in the count 0 and 2. So now we'll see here if Flesher can find an out pitch. He's ahead in the count to Dominic Ford. Ford walked to start off the game. Here's the 0-2, runner goes. That one swung on, head out to left. Keener tracking it, has it on the warning track. And makes the out. So for the second straight inning, Queen puts a pair of runners on base and will strand a pair of runners as we go to the bottom of the second. Scoreless here in game two as you're watching Pioneer Sports Network. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The page along with you here as we get set for the bottom of the second inning as Lewis Ezra will step in to lead things off. And home plate being cleaned off here by the home plate umpire as we were waiting on the umpire from the field who had exited the field there while the half inning was going on, and he is now making his way back out. So it was a little bit of a delay tactic there for our field umpire, Tim Guerin, to get set. And the first pitch strike going to be delivered here from Tanner Jacobson. As Jacobson did a while a walk to Dalton Martin back in the first inning, but was able to work around that. It's Ezra Stiegel and Hinton scheduled. And this one is fouled out of play, third base side. The count moves to one and two. Ezra worked a pair of walks, also reached on a catcher's interference in game one. This one didn't come right out of the hands there of Jacobson, just over into the right-handed batter's box. It's an easy one there for Ezra to hold off on. Now that one swung on, but right to 
the shift. And the second baseman who's playing in shallow right, and Drake Heron. So second time between the two games today where we've seen the shift work out for Queens. As had they been in a normal defensive position, that would have easily been a hit there for Ezra. But in turn, it is the first out. So that'll bring up Jaden Stiegel, the third baseman. Takes that one for a called strike. He waits the 0-1, and that one skipped. Got away from the catcher, Orta. There's two hits so far early in this game. They've both been from Queens. Both of them singles coming in that second inning. And this one skipped early, so Jacobson spiking back-to-back -back pitches. Not making it easy for his catcher. And for Queens, they've stranded four base runners through the first two innings. Tusculum left one runner on base. That was Dalton Martin. This one's going to miss. So the count three and one. Here to Stiegel. Had a hit in game one also. Grounded into double play. Fly out. Chops this one. And I believe that's Fowles. They're going to say it was off of him in the batter's box. So a tough one there. The count was full three and two. I believe he got that one off of his left foot. So the count will be full. Pitch there that was down and into the right hand swinging batter. Here's the 3 2, and that one is swung on, and that one's fouled back. And we'll get out of play. A little battle going here between Stiegel and Jacobson. And that one will miss outside. So, second walk issued by Tanner Jacobson. And we'll put a one out base runner on. So that'll bring up Trey Hinton, who we saw walk in all three times that he came up to the plate in game one, did finish with an RBI as he was walked with the bases loaded in the first inning. Again, went over 100 career walks. And that first game by walking in the third inning gives this one a ride, but that'll be fouled down the left field line. As he tries to get things going here for the bottom third of Tusculum's lineup. The catcher, Wallen Weber, in the on-deck circle in the number eight spot, followed by Williams batting ninth. And a fastball here is going to catch the outside part of the plate. So the count goes to 0-2. Stiegel, after working the one-out walk, leads off at first, being held on by the first baseman. And that fastball will miss up. Sounds like some good life and velocity. And the fastball here for Tanner Jacobson came in with that elevated earned run average. A little bit of trouble with the walks. He's issued two here. Does have one strikeout. Came with, with 15 walks, 14 strikeouts on the season. And then that one came inside. And that's followed off the facade. And then eventually goes down into the seats. That was a tough one there for Hinton, biting in on the hands. Jacobson will check here over the left shoulder. The runner at first. Here's the one, two. And that one is waved at and missed by Hinton. So he's down on strikes. Second strikeout for Jacobson. And there's two away. So that'll bring up Chase Wollenweber. Wollenweber finished with one hit in game one, went one for three with an RBI double in the fifth inning. See if he can provide some two out magic here. That one was low and away. Because that was a one out double that he delivered in the fifth inning of game one. That was after Hinton went first to third on a failed pickoff attempt by Queens. Swings here at the 1-0, skies it in the air. 
First baseman gives it a look, but that one will be off the top of the roof and out of play. Another chance here for Woolen Weber. Jacobson here will set on the mound. Again, trying to get out of the inning. And that one is low in the dirt. Orta kept it in front of him, but the runner, Stiegel, did not go. And we're getting some signs here. Again, Tuscan was held scoreless in the bottom of the first. Got a 1-0 base runner here. 2-1, yeah. it is in there for a called strike two. And took it all the way, the fastball, couldn't do anything with it. Order will go through the signs. 2-2 two -two count, runner goes, but that one is swung at and missed. And for the second straight inning, Jacobson strikes out the batter to end the inning. He's got three now. We're scoreless through two here in game two. We go to the top of the third as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Ah, uh, French vanilla, rocky road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. So early on here in game number two, a scoreless battle between Tusculum and Queens. So two hits in this game so far, both for Queens. And stepping in will be Sexton, the first baseman. In game number one, we saw him get the start in left field. Reached on a fielder's choice in his first at bat, would eventually get to third, but that's where he was stranded. Back out to the left hander, Nick Flesher. And his first pitch here is going to miss inside. Flesher in this one has a lot of pair of singles. He's also issued a walk, hit a batter. He's recorded one strikeout. There's one chopped foul right over towards the first base dugout. Towards the Tusculum sideline. As they come out and get that foul ball. Scheduled will be Sexton, Foster, and Cheek here in the top of inning number three. Two, three, and four batters. Flusher delivers. And that one going to slow it inside. Going over there, we'll toss that one back out. So the count two and one. 
Again, in game one, the momentum for most of the game was controlled by Tuscan, but we did see that seventh inning rally by Queens, and that has translated into some momentum here, I believe, early in game two. And yes, this one is swung on, skied in the air. Ezra giving it a look, still giving it a look, but that one will hit into the seats. As they've gotten at least two base runners on in each of the first two innings. Also the two hits. And on the other side, Tanner Jacobson came in with that ERA above nine. Really has done nicely. He's issued two walks, but he struck out three, including striking out back-to-back -back batters after the one-out walk in the second. And so far, silence the Tusculum offense. So early on, a good battle. 2-2 Two -two pitch. And it's swung on and again skied by Sexton. This time on the third base side, Stiegel is going to give it a look. And Stiegel will make the catch. And that will be the first out of the inning. To the H, number 33, Carter Foster. So that'll bring up Foster, who was hit by a pitch back in the first inning. And the second batter that Flesher has hit this year. Takes the first pitch for a fastball called strike on the outer half. Started to offer at it, but held up. Cheek in the on deck circle. There's the offering. And Dennis inside, and again, Foster started to think about offering at it, didn't pull the trigger. Pioneers only had to go to the bullpen for. One at bat in game one. As Gunnar Becker came one out away from tossing the complete game. This one given a ride. A lot of play over on the first base side. As he got to two outs there in the seventh inning, did give up those three, run, three runs to give up the five hits. And so Brandon Steele, head coach for Tuscum in his third season, went to the bullpen. Trevor Lloyd, who came in and Retired the batter to end the game. That one is swung on and missed. <laughs> and so that'll be the first out. It should be the second out of the inning. The right fielder, number three, Riley Cheek. So that'll bring up Cheek, who hit that high chopper off the plate back in the first inning that was fielded by Flesher, who... Threw the ball over to first to get the out. That allowed the runners to move up to the second and third back in that frame. And as he takes his first one low and inside in the dirt, holds off on it. Gives the signs. That one swung on. Glove there by Stiegel at the third. The throw, gloved by Ezra in time. One, two, three. Top of the third inning, five, three on the put out. Nice response inning there by Nick Flesher after he had allowed four base runners for the first two innings of play. We're scoreless here in game two as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network.
we'll see what Tusculum can do here in the bottom of the third inning. Scoreless here in game two. As it'll be the nine, one, and two batters. We have Kyle Williams. We'll get his first at bat here to face the starter, Tanner Jacobson. In the bottom of the third inning. Fastball here, called for a strike on the outer half so far. As Jacobson gets to complete the first trip to the lineup. Just a pair of base runners, both walks. And they have not got past first base. That one swung out and fouled out of play down the right field line. So the count now 0 2. Williams struck out, walked, and grounded out in game one. And he will not offer at this one. And I believe the catcher order there wanted to check with the umpire down the line, but the home plate umpire said no to that, that it was a ball. And check swing. Here's the one, two. And that one misses up in the zone. And there is some action down in the Queens bullpen. 2-2 two, two on its way. That one is swung on, and that'll be fouled straight back and out of play. As a sidearm thrower, right-hander warming up for Queens. Tossing down the bullpen. Another 2-2 two, two pitch. As that one stays up in the zone. So Williams has worked the count full here, three and two. After he's behind the count, one and two. Here's the payoff pitch. And that misses outside, ball four. So third walk of the game for Jacobson. The first time through the lineup, he walks three batters. And strikes out three. And now he will face Zane Keener. Keener hit that fly ball out to left field. It was caught by Noah Jones to start off the bottom of the first inning. Takes this one up in the zone for a ball. Bryson forward in the on deck circle. That's what I'm trying to see if they can pick up their first hit now, second time through the lineup against Tanner Jacobson. It's a fastball here on the outer half. And the Queens may be trying to think of it, but a bunt being laid down here is the third baseman, Mason Pickard, playing in on the edge of the grass. Jacobson delivers, and that one misses up in the zone. So the count now two and one. So with the third baseman, Pickard playing in, and then the shift a little bit with the shortstop playing almost directly behind second. There is some room there on the left side of the infield. If Keener can take it that way. Here's the two one. And he misses the fastball there. Tried to Come up with it, swing right through it. And so now the third baseman, Picker, will have back. He's actually going to shift over into that shortstop hole. With the count two and two. After the leadoff walk to Williams, this one swung on. Foul out of play, third base side. This one has not been able to get things going here offensively in game number two. Long look by Jacobson over here to his first baseman. Checking that runner at first in Williams. The pitch. And that's going to miss inside. That was on the chalk line of that left-handed batter's box. So the count now full here. to back-to-back -back batters to start off the bottom of the third inning. Williams had worked a walk. See what Keener can do. That one swung on. That one's going to be into the gap. 
Heading for third is Williams. And now the ball gets away. Williams is going to score. Now heading for third is Keener, and he's going to make it. Can he hold the bag? He does. The ball got away from the center fielder, Dominic Ford. And Tusculum is going to get a run out of it. So just like that, we go from a spot where we're talking about Tusculum trying to get their first hit of the game, maybe get something going. And not only do they get their first hit, but they also get their first run. And now have a runner at third and still nobody out. How quickly things can turn. There's now a breaking ball dropped in for a called strike here to Bryson Ford, who is batting. Here's the 0-1. That one swung on, giving a ride, but foul down the third base line. And Jacobson going to take an extra second here behind the mound. I think he looks down to that bullpen and sees the action start to get reactivated down there. He also cleaned off that right cleat. Here's the 0-2. That one swung and missed as a change of speeds there. As it looks like Jacobson a little bit of off-speed stuff, but he got the wave and the miss from Ford, so that's a big first out here in the inning. So for Zane Keener, it was a straight RBI triple that allowed Williams to score from first. Now Dalton Martin steps up, shows bunt, but that one misses outside. Now this one giving a ride out to right field. That one is up at the wall, and that one is gone. Two-run shot for Dalton Martin over the right field wall, and it's three to nothing, Tuscola. Second home run of the day for Dalton Martin, the graduate student. As he picks up career hit number 262. That is going to tie him for the program record for career Thank hits you, in Tuscan baseball you, history. Yes, he is just now one hit away from setting the program record for career hits in a Tusculum uniform. And so now the Tusculum offense has awoken here in game number two. Next swing and a miss here by Trammell as he sees the count even a ball and a strike. So a triple and a home run in the inning. Base pass now empty as it's three to nothing. Trammell sends this one out into center. That one's going to drop for a single. So Brandon Trammell has himself a hit and becomes a one-out base runner. And that will bring up the first baseman, Lewis Ezra. First pitch to Ezra, skied in the air. The catcher order trying to find it back towards the netting. And that one's going to head off the top of the netting. So that will be a foul ball. That one did not tell enough back towards the field to be playable. Ezra lined out to the second baseman his first time up, but it was in that defensive shift. So really, he hit a liner into shallow right, but it was caught because the second baseman, Drake Harris, was playing essentially four or five steps into right field. Hits this one right to Harris. The flip to the shortstop, the turn, is going to be in time for the inning-ending double play as they go 4-6-3, and that will end the inning. But Tusculum gets three runs, two of them coming off the bat of Dalton Martin, the two-run home run, his second of the day. And we go to the top of the fourth here in game two as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Aw, uh, French Vanilla, Rocky Road. 
Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Chase Wallen Weber will throw it on a second there as we get the top half of the fourth inning underway. We came into the inning with a scoreless game. Tusculum searching for their first hit of the game, trying to get something going, and they spot their starter, Nick Flesher, with a three-run advantage after they get the RBI triple from Zane Keener, which got things going, and then Dalton Martin delivering the two-run home run. Career hit number 262, which ties him for the program record for career hits. And now we get going here in the fourth as the first pitch is going to be low there from Flesher. So the count will start off 1-0. and It's Picker, Jones, and Harris for Queens here. Only five, six, and seven batters. Picker struck out his first time up. That ended the first inning. Swings here at this one, gives it a ride on the right field line. Trammell running for it. Well, that one is going to drop. Can get a little bit of a late break on it, trying to pick it up off of the bat. Now we're going to a long foul ball. Again, Pickard came into the day with a 351 batting average leading the way for Queens. Did pick up a hit in the seventh inning in an RBI for the Royals. Finds himself here in a one ball, one strike count. And that one going to miss. Tuscoma wanted a call there, and they get it. And then it brought head coach Brandon Steele up to the top step. Now this one is swung on into the glove of Dalton Martin. So he brings the bat at the plate and flashes the leather there at second base as he goes up the ladder to come up with that one for the first out. So he wild out here to start off inning number four. And that will bring up Noah Jones who Picked up the first hit, and now he'll pick up his second hit. He had the first hit of the game for Queens, leading off the second inning. He now has a one-out single here in the fourth. Second baseman, Drake Harris. So that'll bring up Harris, who his last time up popped up that bunt attempt. And it was caught by Wallenweber. That was with Jones at first. Trying to see if he could move him over to second. Sure ready. Delivers. That one's in there for a called strike. So for Jones, two for two already in this one. We saw him come in as a pinch hitter in the sixth inning of game one. So in four bats, he's three for four. With a double, an RBI, two singles, and a strikeout. Say they might go with a hot bat there moving forward in the series for Queens. This one chopped off the plate. As the count is 0-2 here to the second baseman, Drake Harris with the catcher. 
Anthony Orta in the end deck circle. Both teams with three hits in the game. The only difference right now is in that run column. Tusculum with a 3 0 lead. After they got three in the bottom of the third. No two pitch on its way. And that one will miss outside. No chase there from Harris. As one lover will look over to the first base dugout to get the play call here and then goes to the play chart on his wrist. And the batter, Harris, will ask for time. Now we'll try to go here. Runner, first Jones, he gets his lead. Held on by Ezra. Long look here, staring down with Flesher. Now the pitch, and that one in the hands. And fouled off as Harris able to battle. Good idea to come in on the hands, try to tie him up. So Flesher had worked the one, two, three, third. Could work a one, two, three here if he's able to get a double play. Here's the one, two, and that one is swung out and missed, strike three. So it's not two outs, but they'll take the second one. Strikeout there of Harris. And that will bring up the catcher, Orta, with two away and a runner on first as he has to take off the catcher's gear. The catcher, number seven, Anthony Orta. So he'll step in and ready that right-handed batter's box. So I'm reaching on the fielder's choice. His first time up, that was in the second, and then he eventually... Went from first to third on a single by Melton that just got through the right side and into Chandler right field. And he chops this one off the plate. It's going to be a fair ball. Wollenweber's got to make the throw. He lost his footing in the grass. That's going to get down the line. They're going to send the runner around, and Queens is going to score. And now the runner's going to go up to third. As the other throw got away from Wollenweber, so crazy play there. As a check swing went off the plate, Wollenweber lost his footing. As he went to throw it to first base, it got down the line. Aggressive base running from Queens. They score the run, and then on the throw back in, it hit off of the shin guard of Wollenweber, got away from him, and that allowed Orta to go all the way to third. So now it's 3-1. And Orta stands at third with two away. And the batter is Melton, the shortstop. And now he swings, and that's going to drop in. And now it's 3-2 as Melton has two hits to start off the game and an RBI. And so just like that, all the momentum was on the side of Tuscaloosa. It was 3 nothing, and now... Queens has rallied back in, and it's 3-2. Now coming with two outs after that strikeout of Harris. Now back to the top of the order here for Ford. And now this one swung on. Going to be a tough play. And he was unable to be fielded there at third by Stiegel. And there was almost too much of aggressive base running. As the runner at second, Melton almost went too far. Stiegel had kept it there, but there was no play. So now there's runners at first and second here with two outs. And Queens says not so fast. Tuscan got those three. We might be able to be do the same here in the top half of the four. First baseman Alex Sexton. So that will bring up Sexton, the first baseman. So again, all this with two outs. And it's now three straight singles from Orta, Milton, and Ford to put runners on first and second. That one swung on, and that one's going to be in the left field. And they're going to wave the runner around, and we're going to have a tie ball game. While the trailing runner goes to third. 
And then behind the play, Sexton goes to second, and now we're tied 3-3. And there's runners at second and third. Tusco unable to hold the lead after they went up 3-0 with the three runs in the bottom of the third. Not only did that ignite the Tusculum offense, but it looks like it's ignited the Queens offense. As they've got to Flesher here now with four straight hits. As it's an RBI hit for Sexton. And now it's Foster at the plate. And she will miss up and away. So now Queens, now seven hits. Here early in this one. They've tied it 3 3 and still looking for more. And again, all this with two outs. Well, coming here to Foster. And he waved it and missed it that one. Wilmer kept it in front of him. So the count one and one. A single from Orta. And a crazy play, which really started it all. That check swing chopper off the plate. In which Wilmer lost his footing, threw it down the right field line, and that kind of started it all for Queens. Here in the inning. Here's the one one. Alabama slowing away in the count now two and one. Ford leads off third, Sexton at second. Overall five hits in the inning. Flesher readies. And that one's going to miss and the count is now three and one. Bullpen is going for Tusculum. In through the first two and a half innings of this game, we had no score. And now over the last half inning, we've seen six runs scored between the two sides. Here's a 3-1. That one's a called strike on the other half. Big pitch there for Flesher to get the count full. And now three and two. Trying to find some way here to strand those runners on base and at least get out of this inning with the game tied, 3-3. Long number goes through the signs. Here's the offering. And that's a check swing again. But this one will go foul. Another 3-2. Would have been a chance there for another lucky break for Queens. And a check swing off of the plate. Foster in this game has been hit by a pitch and struck out, trying to keep this two-out rally alive. the pitch and that one is fouled off at the plate and it's Foster and get another chance here that was a pitch in on the hands and he just nicked it Foster trying to get out of the inning Foster going to step out here. Needed an extra moment there. Now he steps back in. Two errors in the inning also for Tusculum. Here's another 3-2 pitch. And that was a call. Strike three. Big pitch there for Nick Flesher to end the inning. But Queens does rally and ties up the contest. 3-3 as they pick up five hits in the inning. And we go to the bottom of the fourth as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. 
Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. We are in Grange County, Tennessee. So now we get set here for the board, bottom of the fourth inning. And just like we were 0-0, zero, zero, we're tied again, but now this time it's 3-3. Three, three. As both teams answer with three-run frames. And it was Tuscan with three runs in the bottom of the third. Seemed to snatch the momentum, but that only awoke Queens, who answered with three runs and five hits. In the top of the fourth inning, all three of those runs earned despite the two errors committed by Tusculum defensively. 2-0, and now the count 3-0 is back out there, Tanner Jacobson. So he's been granted a new chance here after he saw himself fall behind by three. So his offense rally to pick him up and tie the game. He gets the 3-0 pitch in there. Stiegel, Hinton, Wollenweber. And six, seven, and eight batters due up here for Tusculum in the bottom of the fourth inning. And then that one will miss. So that'll be ball four. Second walk for Stiegel in the game against Jacobson. Last time it was a one out walk in the second. This time it's a leadoff walk here in the fourth. So that will bring up Trey Hinton. He struck out his first time up. That was part of back-to-back -back strikeouts recorded by Jacobson to end that second inning. That came following the one-out walk. As it was a line out by Ezra and then that walk to Stiegel, but then it was strikeouts to Hinton and Warren Weber. Count 1-0 and oh. here to Hinton. He swings at that one. That's solid contact. Head out to right center. That one's going to be to the wall. Past the diving right fielder. Stiegel, he's rounding third. And now he's going to stop, puts on the brakes. And he goes back. And he was all set to go. But that wall was quickly brought back in by the outfielders there for Queens. And then Stiegel was able to throw on the brakes. And so it's runners at second and third, nobody out. Here for Wollenweber. It's Tuscan going to try to see if they can get the lead right back. Jacobson going to step off here. So fourth hit of the game for Tusculum. Three of the four hits have been extra base hits. First pitch is swung on by Wollenweber, skied in the air, the catcher Orta trying to track it, and he'll make the catch. And so right after the walk and the double, first pitch Wollenweber swings at, and pops it up in foul territory, and there's one away. So that'll bring up Kyle Williams. Walked his first time up. Scored on that RBI triple by Keener. So that'll bring the infield in now here for Queens. In second and third, one away. Tuscan trying to regain the lead. And fastball here is going to be a called strike. Williams thought it was high in the zone. He's 
Williams will take his time here to step back in. Again, the walk to Stiegel lead it off. Then there was the double by Hinton all the way to the wall in right center. And now the 0-1 is in there for a called strike two on the outer half. So Jacobson does a really nice job spotting the first two pitches of this at bat. Jump ahead in the count. Infield still in here for Queens. And now Jacobson stepped off there momentarily. So now Williams will step out a little bit of chess going on here. And then the pitch there, and then it's low and into the dirt, held on to you by Orta. So the chess match, and it was almost like it was a rush pitch there from Jacobson after Williams had just stepped back in. So the count now, one and two. Rings take their leads from second and third. Williams will ask for time. Re Velcro the gloves. Now he's ready to go. Jacobson delivers. And that one is swung on and missed. Strike three. So big back to back outs after it was second and third and nobody out. Wallen Weber pops up the first pitch and then Williams strikes out. So now it's going to be some two out magic that Tuscan will need here with the top of their lineup. And if they want to try to retake the lead here in the inning. Keener, his last time up, had that RBI triple. And I think Queens is going to intentionally walk Keener, and they will. So they will load the bases up here as Keener will receive the intentional walk. And so that will bring up Bryson Ford. He has flying out and struck out so far early on in this one. He's going to have a quick chat here. Try to go over some strategy. Again, it was a big spot where it looked like maybe Tuscan was going to be able to just take that momentum right back after giving up the three runs with the walk to Stiegel and then the double to Hinton. I really thought Stiegel had a chance to score off that double from Hinton and made it all the way to the wall in right center. And fastball in there for a strike. So Jacobson trying to work around that jam he put himself in. With the walk and the double. Bases are loaded after the intentional walk to Keener. And that one going to miss. As Orta tried to frame it there on the outer half. They went to a breaking ball. Count evens at one and one. That one swung out and fouled straight back. And that will make it back down to the field. So the count now one and two. So now potentially Jacobson just one pitch away from getting out of the jam. And what would that do for Queen's momentum? Then coming to the plate here in the next half inning. Big pitch here for Tanner Jacobson. Bases loaded. Here's the one, two. It's swung on. Hits a right. It's going to drop. One runs in. It gets all the way to the wall. Two runs are in. Here comes the third runner on Keener. He's going to score. Heading for third is Ford. It's a triple. Bryson Ford clears the bases and makes it six to three. What a piece of two strike hitting for the senior Bryson Ford as he goes the opposite way. It goes all the way to the wall. Stiegel, Hinton, and Keener all score on the play. Big way to answer for Bryson Ford. And now that brings up Dalton Martin who takes the first pitch for a called strike. So three RBIs on the play. Now this one swung on. That one's gloved by diving third baseman. The throw, not in time. And that is going to do it. 
a new program record holder for Tuscaloosa. This is Dalton Martin. 263 career hits. A new program record. And 695 at bats. And congrats to Dalton Martin. And 263 career hits. A new program record, and now the Pioneers looking to try to continue their rally. As it's now 7-3, to three, following the RBI single from Dalton Martin. He's able to score was Ford. Now the runner goes. Here's the throw. And the runner is safe, so Dalton Martin now has himself a stolen base. To put himself in a scoring position. So it's second and two outs, 2-0 two count. And this one will miss outside. A little bit of time here for Jacobson. Stepping back in his trammel. And that'll be outside, ball four. And the catcher, Orta, going to go and have a chat with his pitcher. And it looks like we're also going to get a mountain visit. And there's the signal to the bullpen. So we'll have a pitching change here as the line's going to come to an end for Tanner Jacobson. We'll step aside as Tuscom has taken a 7-3 lead here in the bottom half of the inning as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Back, ladies and gentlemen, Doug Page along with you here as new pitcher into the game. Will be number five, Jordan Briones, the left-hander, a junior from Jacksonville, Florida. Transfer from Florida State College. He will take over for Jacobson. First pitch will be a strike as he will face Ezra. 
Here with runners at first and second, two away for Tusculum. And this one will miss low. And that was after Trammell walked on four pitches. So Ezra is the ninth batter of the inning. As Dalton Martin stands down to second, he stole second. And then Trammell the walk. This one misses up and in. So all four runs. Here scoring with two outs in the inning. It was all started with that basis clearing triple for Bryson Ford after the intentional walk to Zane Keener to load the bases. Then Dalton Martin followed with the RBI single. And this one I believe is going to be off the batter, Ezra. And it will. So bases are now loaded. And Tuscan will now officially bat around as Stiegel, who started the inning with a walk, will step up. So now Stiegel steps in, gets his second at bat of the inning. As we work here in the bottom of the fourth inning. All seven runs for Tuscan have scored in the last two innings. Queen scored their three in the top half of the inning. Fastball here, going to miss slow and away. Tuscan taking that first pitch there. So the second time here in this inning, they've had the bases loaded. And last time again, it was Bryson Ford who cleared him with the triple. Here's the 1-0. That one missed inside. As the catcher Orta kept it in front of him. Now he's going to go and have a chat with his new pitcher. Jordan Briones, who just came into the game to take over for the starter, Tanner Jacobson. So if Martin or Trammell are able to score, those both get charged to the starter, Tanner Jacobson. With the batter and runner Ezra at first being the responsibility of Rose after he hit him. Count two and L. That's in there for a call and strike. Fastball paints the outer half of the plate. We have a score update to pass along as Tuscal men's basketball is underway in their NCAA Southeast quarterfinal matchup with Carson Newman. This one gets to the backstop. Here comes Dalton Martin. Here's the toss. It's going to be offline, and Dalton Martin scores. It's now 8-3, to three, the wild pinch. Allows Dalton Martin to come home. Trammell moves up to third. Ezra heads down to second, and the count is now 3-1 and one here to Stiegel. With that update is Carson Newman, 18, Tusculum 13, 11-21 left to go in the first half. Again, Tuscal and playing in their first NCAA tournament since 2009. A strike here, and the count is full now three and two. We saw the women's basketball team pick up a win last night in their quarterfinal matchup, getting their first win in an NCAA tournament game since 2010. They have their semifinal matchup tonight at 8.45, trying to advance to the regional championship game. This one swung on, hit out to center. That one's tailing center for the racing, in for it. And the catch is made. Beautiful diving catch out there in center by Dominic Ford as he left his feet. And he saves more runs scoring in the inning as Tusculum puts up five in the bottom of the fourth to take an 8-3 lead as we go to the fifth here in game number two of our doubleheader. You're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Uh, fresh vanilla, rocky road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop shakalaka, 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 scoop shakalaka, 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 shakalaka. Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Nick Page along with you here is after that five-run inning for Tusculum, they have brought Nick Flesher back out, and he did give up the three runs in the top half of the fourth inning. After his offense had given him a 3 nothing lead, he struggled to work through that frame, eventually got out of it after getting the strikeout of Foster. Well, now his team has scored five more and given him an 8-3 lead. And he will work against the four, five, and six batters here in the fifth as it'll be Cheek, Pickard, and Jones. As Wollen Weber will go through the signs. Must sure check the armband there for a couple of those defensive play calls. So that allowed the batter Cheek to step out momentarily. First pitch here will miss. So three runs, seven hits, no errors in the game for Queens. Eight runs, six hits, two errors for Tusculum. And the count starts off 2-0 oh here to the batter Cheek. 0-2 oh has grounded back to the pitcher, Flesher. And has also grounded out to third. Well, sure, the left-hander delivers. That one swung on, skied in the air. Roll number tried to find it, but that'll get out of play. Down, Off the roof. Stay there, count now two and one. Queens has left six runners on base in this one. Tusculum four. As they looked to add more there with two outs in the inning, but that beautiful diving catch by Dominic Ford as he left his feet in center field. This one swung on right back up the middle. And as Flesher had to bend out of the way. So that will be a leadoff single for Cheek. His first hit of the game. Eighth of the ball game for Queens. And Queens has had some solid hits against Flesher. And not been cheated in this one. So that brings up Pickard, 0 for 2. And that one on the slow. He struck out to end the first inning and then hit that line drive that Dalton Martin went up the ladder to get to start off the top of the fourth. Flesher, long look at the runner. Now delivers, fastball, catches the outer half for a strike. Picker didn't agree with it all that much. Holding the runner on is Ezra as it's cheek after that rocket single right back up the middle into center. Now this one swung on, but that's into the glove. They might have the runner doubled off. The throw is going to be off the line, unfortunately, from Bryson Ford as they had the chance to double off the runner cheek, but the throw just was not on line there for Bryson Ford. So one away. Left fielder, Noah Jones. So second straight time up to the plate. The picker hits a liner to an infielder. And up the middle. And so that'll bring up Jones, who had a single. And his last time, he's two for two with a pair of singles. Now a throw over here. As I mentioned before, going back to the end of game one when he came in to pinch hit, he's had four at-bats, three hits, a double, two singles, a strikeout, and an RBI since coming in. And this one's called strike in the air half. He bowed out of the way like he thought it was inside. But the home plate umpire called it a strike. So the count 0 and 1. Flesher again, the long stare down to the runner at first. He throws over, almost had the runner cheek. Going to second. And again, the left-handed pitcher with the pickoff move. 
And now this one swung on, that's gonna be through. They're gonna think about saying they're running to third, but they'll hold them up here. So Jones just continues to hit the baseball. He's now three for three in this one, four hits between the two games. And it's runners at first and second with one away. Second baseman number 23, Drake Harris. And that'll bring up Harris. Pop up and a strikeout. His two trips to the plate. And there's a fastball called for a strike down the inner half. And there is some action down in the Tusculum bullpen. Hoping that they could get more out of Nick Flesher. And this one is up and in. It looked like maybe they were going to have to go to the bullpen last inning. He got out of it, and then Tusculum had those five runs. So they brought him back out here, but he's trying to work through this here after giving up a pair of singles. There's a first and second, one away. Back to the runner at second. And now this one will miss over the left-handed batter's box. As we'd love to get Flesher at least to the fifth inning. I try to bring him back out for the sixth thing just to help that bullpen. He's behind the counter, two balls and a strike to Harris. Flesher delivers. And that one is low, and the count is now three and one. And Queens looks to maybe try to load up the bases here. See what Flesher can do. It's the signs from his catcher, Wollen Weber. Here's the offering, and that one's high, ball four, and the bases are loaded for Queens. So Tuscan was looking for that shutdown inning after getting the five runs, but they've not been able to do that as now Queens has them loaded with one away. And it will be the, the catcher, catcher order. Number seven, Anthony Orta. And both times he's been up today, something crazy has happened at the plate. We'll see if he can continue that string. So Cheek at third, Jones is at second, Harris at first. And that one swung out, and that one's going to be in the left field. Orta comes up with a hit. One run is in. Here comes the second run. And that's a two RBI single for Orta. And just like that, it's now eight to five. So again, Tusculum not able to get a shutdown inning. The offense full and alive for both teams. As right now, it's a tough time to be a pitcher. Cheek and Jones scoring on the play. Harris to second, and now the batter is Melton, and he lays down a bunt, gets it down. The throw is going to be in time. Now the runner comes home, and the ball got away from the catcher. So a run does score. The out was recorded at first, but the return throw from the first baseman, Ezra, got by the catcher, Wollenweber. So it's a three run inning. It's now eight to six. And I think Tusculum is gonna to go to the bullpen and they will. As Flesher will be done and Queen's still looking for more. They've got a runner at third with two outs and they've trimmed an eight three deficit to now eight to five. It's gonna be eight to six, check that. With the three runs and six over the last two innings. So we'll send this one to a timeout as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you as the new pitcher into the game is going to be Sam Lowe. As he will take over on the mound. The junior out of Binghamton, New York. I'll try to see if he can end this rally here by Queens. As they have a runner at third, two outs. And the first pitch is low and away. So it was three runs in the bottom of the third for Tusculum. And three runs in the top of the fourth for Queens. And then five runs for Tusculum in the bottom of the fourth. And now three runs here so far in the top of the fifth inning for Queens. 8-6 is the score. This one is swung on. That one is hit out to left. Going back to the wall. Keener looks up and that one is gone. A two-run home run. And just like that, we are tied 8-8. As it's a five run inning for Queens. Go, go, go. Off of the bat of Dominic Ford, the center fielder. And so now we've seen 16 runs scored over the last two innings. And that will bring up Sexton. And now this one was up and in. And all the way to the backstop and bounced back out into the field. So eight runs, 11 hits in this one for Queens. Eight runs, six hits for Tuscan. And this one on the slow here from Sam Lowe. After the home run by Ford. And again, both sides have done all their, pretty much all their scoring with two outs. In an inning. Is that elusive third out. And now this one from Lowe's, he's lost his composure. All three of his pitches have been around. And not been close to the strike zone after giving up the home run to Ford. After he came in to take over for Flesher. So the count 3 0. As the pitch here is in there for a called strike. So three singles in the inning and a home run. Foul, just getting a piece of it was Sexton, so the count now full here, three and two. Oh, well, the long looking here to his catcher, Wollen Weber. Three two pitch on its way, and that one is low, ball four, and the inning will stay alive. Here for Queens. The DH number 33, Carter Foster. So that'll bring up Foster. As he is the ninth batter of the inning. To step up. As he has been hit by a pitch and struck out twice. He will face low for the first time. And he misses over in the left-handed batter's box. And we'll get a mound visit here. So there's three runs in the bottom of the third. Queens answered with three in the top of the fourth. And then Tusculum had five in the bottom of the fourth. And now Queens has answered with five here in the top of the fifth. As a conference on the mound here. Again, that third out here over the last two and a half innings has been the struggle for both sides in terms of pitching, trying to get that third out. 
As now the home play umpire going to make his walk out here to break up this conference on the mound as the bullpen for Tusculum gets going. Now Wollen Weber will make his way back behind the plate. Well, the count one to know here to the batter Foster, ninth batter of the inning. Sexton leads off first. He's off and going. Swung on and miss. The throw is going to be out into center. And I think both players there got tied up with the runner and then Dalton Martin, second baseman. And he's going to call it incidental there. Nothing for either side, but the two definitely got tangled up there. Now maybe the home plate umpire is going to come on and have a talk here. As they're going to chat. And they're going to say that there was nothing there. I think they were talking about the two players getting tied up out there at second. So Sexton steals second. Puts himself into scoring position. Count one and one here to Foster. And now that one swung. That's going to be through, and now Queens is going to take the lead. An RBI single, and it's a six-run inning, and they've taken the lead, nine to eight. And as it is Foster who comes up with the single, and the stolen base works out there for Queens, and does that allow Sexton to score? And so coming out here is Brandon Steele. As he's going to talk things over here with Lowe. And it's now 9-8. It looks like we are going to have a pitching change as we are having a pitcher coming in from right field. So we'll step aside as it's now a six-run inning for Queens. Here in the top of the fifth, as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as new pitcher in for Tuscal and their second call to the bullpen. It's going to be our 24, Trent Collins, as he will take over for Sam Lowe. 
Collins, a junior out of Georgia, as he will look to try to see if he can find the third out of the inning. Again, three runs in the bottom of the third for Tusculum. Then three at the top of the fourth for Queens, five in the bottom of the fourth for Tusculum, and now six here on the top of the fifth for Queens, and they have a 9-8 lead. He's swinging and miss the first pitch, the throw down to second, and they get the runner trying to steal second. And so that will end the inning on the caught stealing. So 9-8 is the score. All 17 of the runs have been scored over the last two and a half innings here in game two of our double header. And we will send this one here to the bottom of the fifth as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. We are in Grange County, Tennessee. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as we get set for the bottom of the fifth inning. As stepping in to lead things off will be Trey Hinton. And the first pitch you see is he will take 40 strike here from the reliever as it is Jordan Rose who took over in that fourth inning to get out of it for Queens. But when he got his team out of that inning, they trailed by a score of eight to three. Well, now they lead nine to eight. And there's two strikes on Hinton. And this lefty-lefty matchup. And pitch there stays up in the zone. Queens trying to see if they can Hold on here to pick up their fourth conference victory of their season. And this one is going to be off of the batter. As Hinton will be hit. He will head down. The catcher, number eight, Chase Woolweber. A lot of rain of Woolweber. Step in. That one is swung on. Shell left center and the shortstop. And a race out to make the catch, calling off his left fielder. So Wollen Weber will be the first out of the inning. As that will bring up Williams. Here for the pitcher, checking that runner over there first. And now Williams will take a strike here as he lunged out at that one, trying to bunt. Calumny 0 and 1. One away here in the inning after Hinton let off the inning with a hit by pitch. Williams in a nine batter. He has walked and struck out. 
He's also scored a run. He'll throw over here. Brought the first baseman over the runner. He was off the line a little bit. Because that was Alex Sexton. Trying to kind of step over the runner, Hinton. So own one here to the batter, Williams. Lefty righty matchup. And then almost thinking about the snap throw was the catcher, Orta. So nine runs, 12 hits for Queens. Eight runs, six hits for Tuscan, but they've committed three errors defensively here in game two. A 1-1. One, one. That one will miss Sloan inside. Williams pulled the bat back after he showed bunt again. Drawing in the third baseman for Queens. And Mason Pickard. Williams trying to see if he can get on base here to send it back to the top of the lineup. Zane Keener in the on deck circle. And that one will miss Sloan. The count now three and one. There is a pitcher stretching down in the Queens bullpen. And we'll just be getting ready to start some short tosses. And count three and one. There's the offering, and that'll miss outside, ball four. So that puts runners on first and second. And we're going to get a mound visit here from Ross Steedley. Said didn't see anybody throwing. So I think this will be actually he does make a change. I didn't see anybody throwing down the bullpen, but he did signal down to the bullpen. So we will get a pitching change here for Queens after a hit batter and a walk have put runners on first and second one away for Tusculum here in the bottom of the fifth inning as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Aw, uh, French vanilla, rocky roll, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop, that is, scoop, that is, scoop, that is, scoop, that is, scoop, shakalaka, 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 shaka, scoop, shakalaka, 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 Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. The new pitcher into the game for Queens will be number 18, as it'll be Caleb Staley. Staley, a left-hander, a freshman out of Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Chatham Central High School, as he will be tasked with trying to keep his team in front, as Queens currently has a 9-8 lead after a six-run top of the fifth inning. Yes. Staley will come in here with runners on first and second, one away. After Hinton was hit to start the inning, then the pop-up by Woolenweber, but then the walk to Williams and the top of the Tusculum lineup. Ready to go here. Yeah, Zane Keener will step in. He is flat out to center. He has tripled home a run. He's also been walked intentionally and scored a run. And so it will be a lefty-lefty matchup. And Staley readies. And his first pitch will miss outside. So third pitcher of the game for Queens. The 
Redemption. The last two have been lefties. That one will miss as well, and the count now 2-0. Oh. So we'll take an extra second here. And blow into that pitching hand. Well, there's lead off first and second. Keener awaits the 2-0. And he takes that one inside, and the count now 3-0. So Queen's potentially a pitch away from loading the bases up for Tusculum here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. And there's a strike. Taking it all the way was Keener. And the on-deck circle is... Bryson Ford. Check back at the winner in second. The offering, that one swung on sky in the air. But that'll get out of play. As they run off the roof here and the count will go full. Three balls and two strikes after the count was 3-0. Two back-to-back -back pitches, very good. Here from Staley. The signs from his catcher, Orta. Off pitch on its way. And that one will be fouled back. And that will make its way down to the field. Maybe another 3 2 pitch. Second is Hinton, Williams at first. Couple looks back to the runner at second, the payoff pitch again, that one swung yeah. on. Head out to right, right fielder trying to find it. Had trouble finding it in the whites, but now he picks it up. And so the runners will have to hold. And he's off the bat there. And right fielder, Riley Cheek, I think it lost it. But then was able to pick it up. Came up with a catch. The runners came in. So now it's first and second with two away. Well, Bryson Ford. And so now how big does that bases clearing triple look that he had back in the fourth inning? That came with two outs after the intentional walk to Keener. That one drops in for a called strike. Good pitch from Staley. Really trying to get these two outs here needed and keep his team out in front by a run. That one will mess up so far. Since that bottom of the third inning, we've not had a shutdown inning from either side's pitching staff. Not even here at a ball and a strike. The offering, that one swung out and fouled. It was all over that was Ford, but too far out in front of it. So the count now one and two was Ford will have to do some work here. And two outs here for Queens in the inning. Players have reached to be a hit by pitch and a walk. He's Staley trying to get out of it, the pitch, and that one will miss up. And the count two and two. It looks like that was a design pitch that way. Is immediately when that one was let go, the catcher, Orta, was up out of his stance, maybe to see if Tuscan was going to be running on that pitch. And now this one swung on. Missing it there was Ford. And that one will be caught by the right fielder. So Queens. Does get the zero up on the scoreboard. After Tuscan gets them on first and second with one out. Back to back fly balls to right. And Queens will take the 9 8 lead into the top of the sixth inning here in game two as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. 
That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division II, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Set to go here in the top of the sixth inning. Leading things off. It'll be Cheek, the right fielder. So our first zero put up after the teams had traded runs since the bottom of the third inning. Queens leads at 9-8 to eight here. Game two of our doubleheader. Tusculum took game 1-7-3. Trent Collins back out there for Tuscom. First pitch strike will be delivering. Cheek is one for three with a run scored. That was a single in that fifth inning. There's Queen scored six runs. And this one was rolling outside. Collins will get the signs here from Wollen Weber. And that one broke over in the left handed batter's box. So Queens was able to find the pitcher out of the bullpen to put the zero up on the scoreboard. Now Tuscan trying to see if they can put up a zero here. That one foul right back into the netting by Cheek. Stepping back in here is Cheek counting two balls, two strikes. Pickard in the end deck circle. That one swung on. Williams tracking it in center. He makes the catch. For the first out, allowed out number one. So Pickard will step up. He's 0 for 3 in this one. But each of his last two times up, he's hit Rockets. A line out to Martin at second, and then a line out to Bryson Ford at shortstop. And they have both been very good swings. Nice ball here on Miss Lone Wash. They got by Woolen Weber. Play umpire will go back and pick up that loose baseball. Okay, nine runs, 12 hits for Queens. Eight runs, six hits for Tusculum. Both teams have left six runners on base. After Tusculum left a pair at first and second there in the fifth inning after the hit by pitch and the walk. Collins readies, delivers, and he stays high in the zone. Count two balls and a strike. Jones in the end, next circle, three for three in this game with two runs scored. That one swung on. Stiegel gloves it at third. The throw in time for the second out. So that will bring Jones. Number 26, Noah Jones. Three 
hits in this game. He had one hit after coming as a pinch hitter. In game number one. Starts out here ahead 1-0. Collins delivers. That one swung on a miss. Good pitch. Delivered is the signs. That one is swung on a miss. So good pitches back to back on the inner half of the plate. And Jones not able to make contact with them, so maybe a good spot found there for Tusculum. We can do here, one, two. And that one is swung on, giving a ride out to left. Keener coming in for it, makes the catch, and it's a one, two, three inning for Trent Collins. So both teams answer with zeros on the scoreboard. As we head to the bottom of the sixth here in game two, Queens leads at nine to eight. As you're watching Pioneer Sports Network. Windshield, take one. Hey guys, my windshield just got broken. I feel like I need to blow off some steam. Let's go. One, two, three. Mr. Blanks, <laughs> there's no need to be stressed. Geico makes it easy to file a claim online, on the app, or over the phone. Yeah, but what if I never hear back? That's gonna make me want to go, jam, jam. Nope, your Geico claims team is always there for you. That makes me want to celebrate with some fireworks. Five, six, seven, go. Boom, 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 boom. Geico, great service without all the drama. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Ah, uh, fresh vanilla, rocky road, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop shakalaka, 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 scoop shakalaka, 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 Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. So we are ready to go here in the bottom of the sixth inning. As Dalton Martin, the new all-time leading hitter in Tusculum baseball history. As his last time up picked up hit number 263 of his career with a RBI single. Looks to try to see if he can get this inning underway for Tusculum. Trailing by a run. As that first pitch will miss up and away. Is back out there for Queens is Caleb Staley, the reliever, left-hander. Got those two fly ball outs for the Royals after Tusculum had him in first and second with one out. Evens up the count here against Martin, one and one. Dalton Martin, three RBIs in this game, two run home run back in the third, and then the RBI single in the fourth. Drives this one the other way to left, but that one will be caught just shy of the warning track. As Dalton Martin tried to go the other way. Try to reach base for the fourth consecutive time here, but he'll be the first out. And so that'll bring up Trammell. Trammell one hit in this game. He's also walked and struck out. And that one gets by the catcher order. That starts off one and one. Both teams have left six runners on base in this game. One looking here, now Staley delivers. And that one misses up in the zone. The fastball sailed on it. That goes to 2 0. Trammell had a RBI single and a two run home run back in game one. The 2 0. That one in there, right down the middle for a called strike. Trammell taking it all the way. First baseman Lewis Ezra in the on deck circle. And the 
that one misses, goes over the head of Tremolinski. Duck out of the way. Again, moves to three and one. Scary lost the handling on that one. So we'll see what happens here, three and one. And that one is swung on and missed. Fastball. And the big swing. And the count goes full three and two. Staley delivers the payoff pitch. And that one swung on and missed. The high fastball. And he's not able to make contact with it when it's trammel. So he's down in strikes for the second time. They just gave him the fastball up in the zone. So that'll bring up Ezra. And a third of three straight left-handed batters. He has been on base once tonight, was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning. And this one gets all the way to the backstop, losing his footing there on the follow-through with Staley. Base is empty. Two away here for Tusculum. Looking like Queen's going to toss up another zero on the scoreboard. And drops in nicely for a called strike. And game two of our doubleheader. Two more games scheduled tomorrow at Pioneer Park. And the 1 1 breaks in just as nice. And Ezra has taken two good pitches. And they kind of put the one and two. And this one fouled off. Ezra did offer at that one. The baseball is being ground here at the home plate umpire. Couple being fouled off over the last inning. One to the count. Staley trying to work a one, two, three frame. And he drops it in, called strike three. And he does. So he picks up two strikeouts of uh, Trammell and Ezra. And he gets Martin to fly out. So the lefty gets the three left handers in the Tusculum lineup. That's probably why they left him out there. And we go to the top of the seventh here in game at number two, scheduled for nine. A 9-8 lead here for Queens as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Champions know how to see. It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares. You will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, awesome. did you get it? So when the plan goes out the window, and improvisation becomes the order of the day. Just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls. So we're back here for the top half. Of the seventh inning, 9-8 lead for Queens. As Tusculum has now went back-to-back -back innings without scoring after giving up the lead that they had 8-3 going in to the top half of the fifth inning. Back out there is Trent Collins. First pitch here is going to be fouled by Harris. And that makes its way back onto the field. Collins did work a one, two, three, sixth inning. Trying to again keep this just a one run game as he works against the seven, eight, and nine batters in the Queens lineup Harris, Orta, and Melton. 
Now there's a fastball call for a strike uh, on the outer half. Well, Collins jumps ahead in the count. Harris walked and scored in that fifth inning. He's also struck out and popped up. Here's the 0-2, and that one will miss. And they can't get the chase. As they try to go away, Collins looking to the play chart on his wrist. Looking at the first base dugout for the Pioneers. They'll look at time here. As both batter and pitcher try to get onto the same page. Now we'll get a pitch. And that one is swung on and fouled on the first base line. As that will make its way down towards the Tusculum bullpen. And somebody will pop out of the bullpen to get that and then toss it back up to the dugout. Collins will set here. Ahead in the count. And that's a called strike three. And that will be the first out here in the seventh. So that will bring up the catcher, Orta. Got a two RBI single his last time up. Two hits in the game. He's also reached on a fielder's choice. Strike here, nice pitch, a lot of movement. Down catching the outer half of the plate. Nice righty righty matchup. That one breaks. That was a little more of the plate. It's still no swing from Orta. Let's see what they do here now after working away on the first two pitches. And that one goes away again, but too far away. So Try to get a chase there. Very able to glove it. Base is empty, one away here. Top of the seventh inning. Number eight batter, the catcher Orta, up here for Queens. One, two is swung on, chopped, fouled on the third baseline. They came inside that time. Trying to see if they could beat the bat of Orta. Dalton, the shortstop in the on deck circle. Two for three with an, two RBIs in this game. RBIs in each of his last two at bats. One, two on its way. That one swung on. Only whoever gives it a look. That'll get out of play. And get out of the ballpark. As Orta had to pick up that sliding mitt. Put back into his pocket. One to the count and still. Trenton Collins. And that was inside. Almost caught the batter. Orta. From the inside part of the plate. Two and two. That one is chopped. Foul at the plate. A late swing, but Orta was able to make contact with it. So good battle here after that strikeout of Harris to start in the inning. Orta, after he fell behind in the count early, has battled here. Fought off a couple of good pitches. And as soon as it, this one gives it a ride on the right field line. But that one will drop. And Ezra was closest to it, the first baseman, but it was going to be a tough play for him. And that one did fall in, but just below the wall. Count holds it two and two. Trent Collins trying to find an out pitch. Here against the catcher, Orda. Keep the bases empty. Right ready behind the plate. And that one is low. 
And so now the count is full here, three and two. And he's going to by Gorda at the plate. Collins readies. Payoff pitch is foul over towards the Queens dugout, third base side. Ryan Bader melted in the index circle and then to the top of the order. There's the 3 2 again, and that's going to be ball four. So Orta works a walk. Get a bat there for him. Puts a runner on. Shortstop, number 28, Nick Melton. And that'll bring up Melton. It was two for three in this one. Single in the second, single in the fourth. And RBA ground out in the fifth. And throw over. Order back safely. Had to dive back in. 9 8 the score. The six run top of the fifth inning, the difference is far for Queens. That one swung on, that's gonna be a single in the left field. So a three hit game in the number nine spot for Melton. And that'll be hit number 13 of the game. So that'll bring it forward, he had the home run that gave Queens the 9-8 lead, the two-run shot. After Sam Lowe came into the game, the no doubter to left center. Was runs number five and six of that six-run inning. Watches this one for a strike out of the outer half. So first time that he is facing Trent Collins. Here first and second and one away after that strikeout to Harris started the inning. Order jockeying off second, the pitch. And that one might have got Collins a little off his game there. As he sent that one low in the left-handed batter's box, but Warren Weber was able to glove it. A basketball score update from the Men's Southeast Regional. As Tusculum leads Carson Newman 48-46 with 7.32 left to go in the second half. Pioneers trying to pick up a NCAA quarterfinal victory there and move on to the semifinals. There's the 1-1 pitch and that's a check swing that'll be fouled. And Carson Newman knocked Tusculum out of the South Atlantic Conference playoffs in the semifinals. And then went on to beat Queens to capture the SAC championship. And then the conference's automatic qualifier. And then in the process of that, becoming ranked number 23 in the latest NABC coaches poll. Here's the one, two. That one swung on. That's going to be a blooper into right. That should score a run. Now they're going to throw to third to try to get the runner. They won't. And it's now 10-8 to eight as it's a RBI single for Ford. And there's runners at first and third with one out. First baseman, Alex Sexton. So it was Orta who scored from second. And then Melton going first to third. And head coach Brandon Steele making his way out of the dugout, makes the signal down to the bullpen. We'll have a pitching change. We'll send this one to a timeout, and we'll get you the details of the new pitcher for Tusculum as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network.
fifth floor problem. Okay. Not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not today. <laughs> Jimmy, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? Happier than Dikembe Mutombo blocking a shot. <laughs> Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as we come back with a pitching change for Tusculum. As into the game, Justin Parker, the right-hander, senior out of Huntsville, Alabama, will take over as Queens has added to their lead following a one-out RBI single from Ford. His third RBI of the game, his third hit of the game, as it's now 10-8. And Sexton will step in. RBI double for him in this game. He's also walked, scored a run, reached on a fielder's choice. And Queens has runners here at first and third. And throw over to check the runner. And that's four. It's obviously very good speed. I mean, this is a spot probably where Queens might be looking to run to try to see if they can get second to put two runners in scoring position. Also get them out of a potential inning inning double play spot. That one swung on, popped up in the infield, and the catch will be made there at third. For the second out. So that will bring up. Foster. Number 33, Carter Foster. He has singled, struck out twice, and been hit by a pitch in this game. Parker sets, delivers. That one miss over in the left handed batter's box. Good one to pass along the scoring update from the Southeast Regional Quarterfinals men's basketball action. Tuscaloosa and Carson Newman. Tuscaloosa leads 52 47 with four minutes to go. They have rallied back in the second half. That one chopped foul at the plate. We'll come down into the Queens dugout. As Carson Newman right now has not scored a bucket in the last five minutes and 37 seconds. Of the scoring drought there for. The Eagles. Parker sets, checks over the shoulder and throws over. Back safely. Goes forward. And forward the runner at first. The one over at third is Melton. Then he started out with the strikeout. But then a walk and back-to-back -back singles. 
Now this one fouled at the plate. And count the ball on two strikes. Ten runs, 14 hits, no errors for Queens. Eight runs, six hits, three errors for Tuscaloosa. Queens looking to try to hand Tuscan just their second South Atlantic Conference loss this season. One two pitch. Before that, a throw over. Now the runner coming home. And Queens is going to get a run. And a throw over to check the runner at first. The ball had got away from the first baseman, Ezra, and then the runner from third. Took off and came on home. That's the tough spot there. Of trying to throw over and check the runner at first with the runner in third, and that leads to a run as it's now 11 to 8. And as Melton is able to score. And count one and two here to Foster. Now the runner goes to strike at the plate. So that's strike three. That ends the inning, so the throw was not needed. And as the strikeout ends the inning, but two runs score for Queens. They had some insurance runs. As it's now 11 to eight here at the seventh inning stretch here at Pioneer Park as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. You're right, that's the fifth floor problem. Okay. Mountain Mahas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not today. <laughs> Jimmy, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? Happier than to campaign with Tembo blocking a shot. <laughs> Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Page along with you here as we get set for the bottom of the seventh inning. Now Tusculum finds himself trailing 11 to 8 after Queens adds a pair of runs in the top of the seven. As they look to try to pick up again their fourth win in the sack this year and Tusculum their second loss. Two teams will play twice again tomorrow here at Pioneer Park. And Jaden Stiegel leads things off. He takes a called strike as Caleb Staley back out, the left-hander. Worked a 1-2-3 sixth inning, including back-to-back -back strikeouts of Trammell and Ezra, the left-handers. And now he starts ahead here 0-2. To Stiegel, who has walked twice in this game as he walked back in the second inning, then walked and scored in the fourth inning. This one will miss up in the zone. And 11 runs off 14 hits for Queens. They've left seven runners on base. And that one is going to ride, but fouled on the third baseline. For Queens closing in on a season high here in runs for a single game. As to open up the season, they beat Erskine 13 to two. So that's their season high for runs in a win and a strikeout here. So three straight strikeouts for Staley. Going back to the sixth inning. As that'll bring up Trey Hinton. Hinton in this game has doubled, been hit by a pitch, struck out. And that will 
this outside. So lefty lefty matchup here for a couple of right handers. There's a fastball paint to the inside part of the plate. Even the count up. Warren Weber in the on deck circle. That one will miss inside. Again, they try to paint the inside corner. There's the two and one. And they serve with a strikeout to Stiegel. Staley delivers. That one in there for a called strike. There's the 2 2. And that one fouled out of play. Third base side. Good job there by Hinton to keep the at bat alive. Fastball up in the zone. Pioneers looking for base runners. Again, had those eight runs. All between the fourth and third inning. And as this one is going to put Hinton over at first. Gives one of the base runners. That will bring up one of them. Catcher. Hinton was hit by the pitch. Second time tonight that he's been hit by a pitch. And this one in the dirt. It's up the line here from the catcher Orta, but not going anywhere was Hinton. So the count just goes to one and L. He delivers. That one in there for a call and strike. As one of the signs from his third base coach here. As he readies the count one and one, one away. That one fouled back into the netting. One over got a good swing on it. for Staley. Now delivers. That one swung on and again fouled back and out of play. So trying to work up and away. And Chase Woolen Weber. He's 0 for 3. A pop up to the catcher. He's popped up to the shortstop. Is also struck out. Trying to see if he can come up with a big late inning hit. Here for the Pioneers. This one trails 11-8. And that one will miss outside. Leading off first is Hinton. He was hit by the pitch second time tonight. He's been hit by a pitch. 2-2 two -two pitch is on its way. That one is skied in the air. And that one will be caught by the first baseman in foul territory. So a big second out there as Weber is going to foul out. And that will bring up Williams, the number nine batter. Williams 
Williams has walked twice in this game, also struck out. He walked and scored in the third, walked in the fifth, struck out in the fourth. This is his first at bat since the fifth inning. Fastball there misses up in the zone. Out of the hands of Staley. is Hinton, the one out hit by pitch. That one close. Coming from the home plate umpires, the count two and one, get take there by Williams. Again, he's done his best job of being able to work counts here. For the Pioneers. Is he ready? He's here in the right-handed batter's box. Staley, the pitcher, the left-hander. Trying to work around that hit by pitch. This one swung on a cue shot the opposite way. And it'll be played by the first baseman. So Queens will get out of the inning. As Tusculum leaves a runner. And we go to the top of the eighth as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Aw, uh, fresh vanilla, rocky roll, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop this. Shaka-laka, 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 shaka, scoop. Shaka-laka, 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 Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Look, Paige, along with you here, a score update from the NCAA Southeast Regional Quarterfinals men's basketball action. It is at the end of regulation. Queens and Tusculum tied at 57-57. The Pioneers had a late lead, but Carson Newman rallied there and hit some free throws down the stretch. Also, Tusculum missing some Key free throws that could have ended it. So that one will be decided in overtime. 11-8 is the score here. We work in the top of the eighth inning. Queens has an 11-8 lead. And he's back out there for Tusculum. And there's Justin Parker, the right-hander. After he got the second and third outs in that seventh inning. I did see Queen score a pair of runs. Count one and one here. As that one hit off the plate as the batter is cheek. Cheek in this game is one for four with a run scored. And the count here, two and one. And a swing and a miss there. 
Good fastball from Parker. Count now two and two. Got the play sheet here. Waller will give out the signs. Two, two on its way. That one swung on. But deep and hold it short. And he's holding on to that one. And it's going to be four. So that will be a hit to get the eighth inning underway from Cheek. Fifteenth hit of the game for Queens. Third base number 13, Mason Pickard. So that'll bring a Pickard. Cheek leads off first. Second hit of the game for him. And starting to show bunt there was Pickard, but that one missed over into the left-handed batter's box. Then he got away from Woolenweber. Far enough away for the runner to move up. Pick it in the scheme. They struck out, lined out twice, grounded out to third. Parker checks over the shoulder. Now bunt shown again, and that one will be fouled. On the third baseline. Evens up here to ball and a strike. For Queens, three runs in the fourth, sixth in the fifth, two in the seventh. As they lead it 11 to 8. Again, showing bunt is Pickard. That's enough for a strike as Pickard did not offer at the pitch. Okay, now, one and two. Pickard will look back to the dugout. Third base side for some signs. No time asked for here by Pickard. Jones in the on deck circle. Middle of the lineup here for Queens. And a one two pitch on its way. That one is swung on. And missed. Four strike three. So the first out as Pickard is down on strikes for the second time tonight. Well, the fielder, number 26, Noah Jones. So we'll bring up Noah Jones. Three for four in this game. Did fly out to end the sixth inning. That was part of a one, two, three frame for Tesquam. Justin Parker sets on the mound here. Checks that runner first, delivers. That one's going to be fouled off. Count goes to 0-1. So again, these two teams will play again tomorrow. First pitch of game one scheduled for a 1 o'clock start here at Pioneer Park. And then next weekend, Tuscan will hit the road for a four-game series at Lincoln Memorial. Runner is going and the throw is going to be in time as the runner is caught stealing. And it's two to four there. Nice job by Woolenweber as he gets cheek trying to take second. And now the bases are empty two away. Nice throw, nice tag applied. And the count is 0-2 to the batter Jones. Yes. Parker sets, delivers. That one fouled back into the netting. And we'll come back down in. As the on deck batter, Harris, was just waiting for it to come back down the netting. The 0 2 pitch. Walt Weber sets up. Here's the offering. And that one, they say he went at it. And a nice job there for Parker. As Justin Parker gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. Coupled around the cot stealing, and we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tuscaloon trails 11-8. You're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. You're right. 
That's a fifth floor problem. Okay. Not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not today. <laughs> Jimmy, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? Happier than Dikembe Mutombo blocking a shot. <laughs> Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here. Give you a check at what's going on around Tuscal Athletics today. Some score updates from women's bowling as they were at the Stallings Invitational in Greensboro. Tusculum going 2-2 two and two in Baker format bowling today. A big win knocking off number 11 Lincoln Memorial as they defeat the nationally ranked rail splitters 937-900. They also beat Belmont Abbey 823-748. And then dropped an 863 to 813 decision against Norfolk State. And also a 1004 to 874 decision against number 13, NCA and T. Also earlier men's lacrosse action. As Tusculum fell 21 to 11 at number 7, Lenore Ryan. And then earlier in women's beach volleyball action, Tusculum defeating Erskine 4 1, still waiting on a score from their match against Carson Newman. And then currently in men's basketball overtime of the NCAA Southeast Regional quarterfinals between Tusculum and Carson Newman. Tusculum currently leading 62-61 in overtime with two minutes left to go. Here Tusculum trails Queens 11-8 in game two of our doubleheader. New pitcher into the game for Queens is number 41, Chris Ragosta. A right-hander as he will take over. And this one, I think he drills Keener on the first pitch, and he does. So first pitch, Keener is hit in the back of the foot. So he will become a leadoff base runner. Start out the bottom. That'll bring in Bryson Ford. His big hit in this game was back in the fourth thing at the time. Tusco in the lead as he had a bases clearing triple. Which here is a fastball and this is outside from Ragosta. Here on base for the third time tonight has been hit by a pitch, intentionally walked, and also had a triple of his own that scored a run. Way that's high, and the count two now. Just gonna try to see if they can rally late here. Again, this one is scheduled for nine innings. So Tuscan will get in the current state at least one more set of their bats in the bottom of the ninth, depending on what they can do here in the bottom of the eighth. Trailing 11 to 8. That one almost got by the catcher with a nice glove there from Warda. With the count three and oh. Is a right-hander throwing in the Queens bullpen. So it might be a short this year for Ragosta. 3-0 pitch is upcoming. 2-4. They're going to throw over and check on the runner. And for Keener, I don't think he barely even gotten the first lead off of the bag. Now he'll get a little bit of a lead. There's the 3 0, and that's going to miss ball four. We'll see if we get any movement here from the Queens dugout. As there was a coach at the top step of the Queens dugout, he thought about, he started to take a step out to the field, but then 
step back into the dugout. So that'll bring Dalton Martin. Oh, now we're going to get the visit from the manager, Ross Steedley. And he does make the signal to the bullpen. So just two batters faced by Ragasta. We'll get a call to the bullpen as Tusculum has runners at first and second. Nobody out. And Dalton Martin set to bat as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Floor problem. Not in my house. <laughs> no, no, no. Not today. <laughs> Jimmy, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? Happier than to campaign with Tembo blocking a shot. <laughs> Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as a new pitcher for Queens. Going to be number 52, Drew Machete, the right-hander. As he will take over for Augusta, who faced two batters and hit the first batter and walked the second. As Tesco has runners at first and second, nobody out. Dalton Martin will be the batter. As they trail 11 to 8, we work here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Scheduled for nine. As Queens trying to hand Tusculum just their second conference loss of the season. Yes. Machete will finish his warm up tosses here. I believe he is good to go. So that will bring up Dalton Martin. Martin in this game has walked, also has a two-run home run, an RBI single, and has flied out to left. Again for Dalton Martin. Two home runs on the day. And he's with a two-run home run in game number one in the second inning. And so he watches the first pitch here on the south side for a ball. Goes to one and oh. So again, Queens, the shift on here is they have three infielders on the right side of the field. Anticipating Martin to pull it to the right side. That was looking through first and second. That one is swung on. And fouled over on the third base side. So it's not one and one. at 390 now with this performance between game one and game two here. There's a 1-1 count. Pitch there is going to drop in for a strike two on the other half. Good pitch from Machete. And as he now works ahead. Again, Queens looking for some big performances from their bullpen as Tuscan has not scored. Since that five run, bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the one, two, and that one is swung at. And the tag applied by the catcher, so that'll be a strikeout to Dalton Martin. So a big first out there for Queens. Now Tramble steps up. So 
But Trammell steps in. He has singled, walked, struck out twice. And as that one misses outside, and I really feel like a spot in this part of the lineup between Martin, Trammell, Ford, and Ezra. Usually, just in the moment when you think one of them is a little bit off, looking for that big hit, they come up with it in a time when Tusco needs it most. And it feels like that's a spot where Trammell can really use a big hit here. And as he takes a big swing and the fastball there, low and away. Then Trammell back in game one. Uh, the RBI single, the two-run home run. This will be the solo home run. That followed the two-run home run by Dalton Martin. It was the back-to-back -back home runs. So you feel like a big hit for him here. Here's the 1-1. He swings this one, gives it a ride out to right. That one going. If it's fair, it's gone. But it's a foul ball. And as that one was given a ride by Trammell, and he almost... Level of the score here at 11. As that was the pitch to hit, but he couldn't keep it fair. Now on the right field line. So the count now, a ball and two strikes. And the fastball that he was able to handle. And as that one's going to miss. As we do have a score update for you from men's basketball action, NCAA Southeast Regional Quarterfinals. And the Tusculum Pioneers have won in overtime. They have defeated 23rd ranked Carson Newman 65 63. Ball here gets away from the catcher. And the runners here in the field miscommunicated as the ball got away from the catcher. Is out at second. Zane Keener did not go to third. Behind the play, Bryson Ford, he was almost all the way to second and then had to go back. So the counters were full, but again, Tusculum, men's basketball, they've advanced in the NCAA tournament to the semifinals after knocking off 23rd ring Carson Newman 65 63 in overtime. And a late swing here as that goes right to the dugout of Queens. So last night it was the Tesco women's basketball team winning their quarterfinal matchup to advance to the semis. Tonight it's the men's team winning to go into the semis. So they avenge their loss against Carson Newman in the SAC tournament. And pick up the win. Trenton Gibson finishes with 22 points to lead Tesco. And we have a 3 2 pitch here to Trammell. One away, runners at first and second. And that one is going to miss ball four as the Queens dugout wanted that to be strike three. And that will load the bases up with one away. And Queens coaching staff has to be that one miss. So that will bring up Ezra and his trammel walks. Ezra has been hit by a pitch in this game, grounded into a double play, struck out, lined out. Takes this one low for a ball. And he has another pitcher warming up in the bullpen for Queens. Here's the 1 0 pitch. And that one misses inside the count now, 2 0. As it's a left hander that is up and warming for the Royals. Down the bullpen, down the left field line. And the bases are loaded here for Tusculum. And now that one misses, and the count is three now. The walk here would bring in the run. Ezra awaiting the 3 0 pitch. And he takes the ball four, and it does bring a run in. And it's now 11 to 9. First run for Tesculum since the bottom of the fourth. And it's an RBI for Ezra. Back to back. Jaden Stiegel. Stiegel will come up. Left hander again is warming for Queens. 
One away, bases loaded for Tuscola. Steagle has walked twice and struck out in this one. And he takes that one inside for a ball. Probably a spot here where if the pitcher Machete walks the batter, probably we go to the bullpen with a left-hander in the on-deck circle and Trey Hinton. Try to get that lefty-lefty matchup. Again, bases loaded, one run is in for Tusculum. And that one in there for a called strike, catches Dana Hunt. So Machete able to get back into the strike zone after back-to-back -back walks. Three walks in the inning total for Queens pitching. And also hit a batter. Heston has not picked up a hit yet in the inning. And that one is off the elbow guard. Queens trying to say that he leaned into the pitch. Heston does score, and it's now 11 to 10. The base is still loaded with one away. And I think now Queens is going to ask the home plate umpire to go out and talk with the umpire in the field to see if Stiegel did his job to try to avoid being hit by that pitch. And they will say that he did. So now we will get a mound visit here from Queens. Let's we'll see if they go to the bullpen. They do for their lefty. So we will send this one to a commercial. Bases loaded for Tesco. One away. They have rallied now for two runs. It's 11-10. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. We're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Ah, uh, French vanilla, rocky roll, chocolate, peanut butter, cookie dough. Scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop this, scoop shakalaka, 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 scoop shakalaka, 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 Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you here as we are in the middle of a bases loaded situation here for Tesco in the bottom of the eighth inning. They've rallied for two runs as they trailed 11 to 8. It is now 11 to 10. Again, bases loaded, one out. New pitcher into the game for Queens as a left hander as it's number 11, Alec Hunter of Lexington, North Carolina. And he delivers a ball here to start off the at bat to Hinton. So again, men's basketball action. The pass on that final score is Tusculum. Records their first ever NCAA tournament victory by beating Preston Newman in overtime. They will advance to the semifinals. They will play tomorrow at 5 p.m. against Lincoln Memorial. Here's the 1-1, one, one. that one misses going inside. And then Tusculum avenging a loss in the tournament to Christian Newman as they knocked him out in the semifinals. Tusculum has actually beat LMU this year as they beat them home at Pioneer Arena. Here's the 2-1, that one gets by the catcher, here comes the tying run, and we're tied at 11. 
And both runners move up behind the plate, a second and third. It's all even of 11. And Tusculum has still not registered a hit in the inning. And it's 11-11 as Bryson Ford scores from third. Trammell goes over to third, Ezra down to second. Now Hinton ready is in the left-handed batter's box. And that one's low, and I thought the count was 3-1. And it was, they had it wrong on the scoreboard. The count was indeed 3-1, they had it wrong on the scoreboard. So the count was three and one. So that was ball four. So base is loaded again. So that will bring up Woolen Weber. And the base is loaded. Now Tusculum trying to take the lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. They've already put up three. And what a big spot this would be for Woolen Weber. He's had a tough game, 0 for four. And he watches the first pitch miss outside. He has popped up in foul territory twice. He's popped up in the infield of the shortstop and also struck out. Looking for something big here for his team. Let's take their leads. Hunter delivers. That one swung on. Off the third baseman. He can't pick up the ball. Pioneers have the lead. Everybody's safe. The third baseman. Pickard couldn't pick it up. And the run scores safe at first is Woolen Weber, and we've got a 12 11 game. So Tusculum is still not registered a hit as they give that an error on the third baseman, Pickard. Woolen Weber does get credit for the RBI. And that now brings up Kyle Williams. And bases are still loaded. This one swung and a chopper to first. The toss home and a nice play there by the first baseman. That was a beautiful play on this scoop by Alex Sexton to get the force out at home. What a nice play. That was his only option as nobody was covering first. And while he's diving forward, he shovels it home to beat the runner, and that was a big, big play there for Queens. So that's the second out, base is still loaded. This one swung on, skied in the air. The shortstop tracking it, makes the catch, holds on to it. So Tusculum can try to win it. They've got a one-run lead. And we'll see if they can close it out here in the top of the ninth inning. They lead at 12-11 as you're watching the Pioneer Sports Network. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you? You're right, that's the fifth floor problem. Okay. Not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Not today. <laughs> Jimmy, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? Happier than Dikembe Mutombo blocking a shot. <laughs> Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Page along with you. So now... It's a chance where Tuscombe looks to try to see if they can pick up the win as we are in the top of the ninth. Back out there for the Pioneers is Justin Parker after Tuscombe scores four in the bottom of the eighth. The first runs that they get since the fourth inning. 
But now they need a shutdown inning here as they just have one run to work with. And for the Queens Royals, they'll have their seven, eight, and nine batters, barring any pinch hitters or changes. As Harris, the second baseman, will lead things off. He has walked, struck out twice, and popped up. And again, it's a one-run advantage for Tuscal after scoring four times in the bottom of the eighth inning and not recording a hit. Let's see what... Justin Parker and Tusculum can do. Harris Orta Melton, again, barring any pinch hitters. And the first pitch is going to miss for a ball. Never had that one pop out of his glove. Harris last time up, struck out in the seventh inning. That one swung on, and that's going to be a leadoff single in the right field. So a big hit to lead things off for Harris as the tying run is on base with nobody out. So that will bring up the catcher, Orta. He's been a big bat in the lineup for Queens. He's been on base all four times today. And we might have a pitching change here as Brandon Steele makes his way out of the Tusculum dugout first base side. No signal has been made yet, so maybe a chance here for the Tusculum bullpen to get some more warm-up tosses in. Again, no signal has been made. And actually now he is going to make the signal. So a very smart move there by Brandon Steele. He does not make the signal coming out of the dugout. He goes out to the mound, gives his pitcher a couple more tosses in the bullpen, then signals to the umpire that he's going to make the pitching change. So it will be a change here for Tusculum with the tying run on first. Nobody out in a 12-11 game. A game that started at 4.50. As we've crossed over the three-hour mark. And we will get a change. So Parker will come out to a round of applause from the crowd that is here. And from the teammates out of the Tusculum dugout. And our new pitcher will be the left-hander. It'll be number 25, Mitch McCain. And McCain will be tasked with trying to close the door here on Queens. But it will not be an easy order, that is for sure. Again, the leadoff batter, Harris, singled to right field. So we've got Orta, Melton, and then you think back to the top of the order for Ford. And really the seven through nine batters and then the top two batters in the lineup, Ford and Sexton here in game two, they've done nothing but hit here for Queens. So right into the bulk of what's been working for the Royals tonight. As they saw their 11-8 lead evaporate in the bottom of the eighth inning. Tusculum tried for more. They had the bases loaded and they actually left them loaded. But again, they did not record a hit in the inning. There was four walks in the inning, two hit batters, a wild pitch, an error. As they would have loved to have gotten probably another one or two runs. But for the time being, they have to take it, and they've got the 12-11 lean. And it'll be on the shoulders of Mitch McCain, the left-hander. A 2.08 ERA. As he comes out of the bullpen to take over for number 33, Justin Parker. McCain, the senior. See what he can do here as he readjusts that play card on his right arm. 
As the play call gets shotted out from the Tusculum dugout, first base side. So the batter steps in, it's the catcher, Orta. And first pitch is going to miss over towards the left-handed Bears box as Orta shows bunt. He wants to move the runner into scoring position. Orta has reached on a fielder's choice, singled twice and walked. Starts by showing bunt. He takes it back and takes a strike. Which is the outer half of the plate. And the next circle is Melton, the number nine batter. He's had a very good game two, three for four with a couple of RBIs. Showing bunt again, getting the bunt down. It's gonna stay fair. This will move the runner up and the Throw was not handled at first by Dalton Martin. It was a low throw. And so that's going to put a pair of runners on base with nobody out. And as the bunt was laid down by Ortis. So he's been on base all five times tonight. We're going to get a pinch runner here. And as he will come out and checking in will be number one as it will be Griffin Hughes. He represents a potential go-ahead run at first base for the So again, another error for Tuscan, their fourth of the game. So the game will set here, and it's Melton. Again, he's been swinging the hot bat here in the game. Three singles, a couple of RBIs. As he gets a bunt down, but that's going to go foul. So he's trying to put both runners into scoring position, potentially with one out. The Pioneers were playing here at the corners, anticipating the bunt. That was 0 and 1. Nobody out. First and second. The pitch, the bunt is popped up, but Warren Weber can't get to it. I don't think he would have had a chance to get to that. He did that one play umpire right behind him. And I don't know that he did because it wasn't popped straight up in the air. It's from the back at more of an angle. So the count is 0-2. We'll see if that takes off the bunt. You never know. Queens has been very aggressive here tonight. So we'll see if they do keep the bunt on, risk versus reward, we have to think about. And showing bunt, and missing it, that should be strike three, and it is. Melton didn't pull the bat back, he couldn't make contact for the bunt, and that is the first out. Now that against the top of the order, the center fielder, number six, Dominic Ford. So that'll bring up Ford. He's been another big bat here in this one. A pair of singles, a two-run home run back in the fifth inning. He's also walked, three RBIs. And there's a strike down the outer half of the plate. And McCain will start ahead of the count 0-1. The runner at second is Harris. He let off the inning with the single. And then Orta, who was replaced by the pinch runner, he was over at first, reached on the air. Here's the 0-1. That one swung out and missed a big strike two. They got four to go out of the zone. That one was in the dirt. And they count 0-2 here to Dominic Ford. Left-hander McCain. Sets on the mound. There's the pitch. That one's fouled back, just getting a piece of it off the end of the bat and was forward. Again, they went low and away. Nice 
And head coach Brand Steele for the Tuscan came out to get that foul ball. And take it back to the dugout. No one two count here, one away. Runners at first and second for Queens, trailing 12 11. Here's the pitch, and that one swung on, tipped into the glove. Two away, back to back strikeouts for Mitch McCain. First baseman, number 27. Big Alex second Sexton. out. And that brings up Sexton. He had that really nice play on the bunt with the bases loaded as he was charging at it, left his feet and shoveled it home to his catcher for the force out. Swings and misses at the first pitch here. He's behind the count on one. Really look to that as a big play that happened back in that bottom of the eighth inning. As at the time, that was the second out in that force out at home. He's behind the count here, own one. McCain, the left hander, sets, delivers. That one swung out and missed, and the count is own two. Now Tusklin potentially a strike away. As McCain had asked for the call to be shouted out again. Now he readies on the mound. 0-2 the count, two away here, top of the ninth inning. Here's the pitch. That one is going to be up and away, not offering, and it was Sexton. As that was a good pitch out of the zone. Really in the spot, have two pitches to work with if you're McCain, the Pioneers. Don't want to definitely give... Next anything too good to hit, especially heading the count like this. And the other goes to the sides. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung out in this strike three. Pioneers win as McCain strikes out three in a row. After Queens puts runners on first and second with nobody out. 12-11 the final. What an effort by Mitch McCain after he comes in, gets charged with the error on the bunt that's laid down by Orta, but responds with three strikeouts in a row to secure the come from behind victory for Tusculum. 12 11. They score three in the third, five in the fourth, and then four in the eighth, and they don't get a hit in the eighth, and they win 12 11. Two really good games here on uh, the opening day of this four-game set between Queens and Tusculum. They'll be back at it tomorrow. Again, 1 o'clock scheduled first pitch here at Pioneer Park. As we'll get you a look here at the final line. 11 runs, 16 hits, 1 error for Queens. 12 runs, 6 hits, 4 errors for Tusculum. But they come away with the victory in this one and what an effort from the Tusculum bullpen is really you looked back to that six run inning and thought that that was the game changer in this one for Queens as they rallied to take the at the time 9-8 lead and then they got those two runs in the seventh went up 11-8 and really just kind of felt like that was going to be it for scoring the rest of the way. But Tusculum scores four in the bottom of the eighth, and they come away with the victory. So that they improve to 13 and two overall, nine and one in the South Atlantic Conference. Queens, they fall to five and 14 and three and 11 in conference. As it was a big. Effort there from McCain. Again, three strikeouts after the error. And Queens getting runners on first and second. Nobody out. So that'll do it for us here tonight. A pair of wins for Tusculum. They win in an exciting fashion here in game number two, 12-11. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we'll have both games for you here live on the Pioneer Sports Network. Again, 1 o'clock first pitch scheduled for game one, a seven and a nine inning game. As Tuscan will look to try to see if they can pick up two more wins, but it'll be a good one as Queens has showed absolute fight and grit here 
through these two games. So expect more of the same tomorrow. For Doug Page, for Corey Seswick, our producer, we thank you for tuning in here tonight. Again, two wins for Tusculum. They come away winners 7-3 and 12-11 as you've been watching the Pioneer Sports Network.